Wisconsin is lucky to have a sharp young researcher tackling the problem of radium in drinking water. Hi, I'm Maddie Matthews. I'm standing outside of Well 25, uh, the municipal well from Madison Water Utility. We're looking at radium because it's a contaminant of concern here in Wisconsin. Um, and Matthews is a graduate student at UW-Madison. Radium levels are not a significant health threat in Madison's water, but the city's wells offer a convenient way for Matthews to learn how the element behaves in aquifers. Radium is a naturally occurring carcinogen. So like calcium, it'll, if it's ingested, it'll aggregate in your bones, but unlike calcium, it'll undergo radioactive decay, which you probably don't want happening in your bones. So inside, we were just uh, measuring dissolved oxygen levels and pH, as well as conductivity and temperature of the water. Um, those are all indicators of where the water is coming from. I also took some samples and I filtered them. Uh, and some of those samples will go for a major ion analysis as well as alkalinity. Uh, and others I will send to the Wisconsin State Hygiene Lab for trace metal analysis to look for uh, the parent nuclides of radium, uranium, and thorium. The um, geology that we have here in Wisconsin and the specific aquifer chemical conditions has resulted in higher um, radium occurrence, especially on the eastern side of this state. It can be expensive for cities and rural entities to remove the radium from their water after they pump it. And Waukesha argued for more than a decade that it needs water from Lake Michigan because its groundwater is contaminated with radium. But knowing where the radium is underground may offer a cheaper solution, according to Matt Ginder-Vogel. Ginder-Vogel is advising Matthews on the project. If you can construct the well to avoid the issue altogether, you save yourself a ton of money, a, a ton of grief, and uh, you have radium-free drinking water. Matthews begins with taking water samples from many municipal and monitoring wells. And so she analyzed all those water samples and said, okay, my radium levels are pretty variable, but the one thing they have in common is shales. You know, there seems to be a real association uh, with the, the proximity to shale layers. And so what we've done is gone out to the core repository and gotten shale material. The core repository is essential to this investigation. It contains thousands of geologic cores from all over Wisconsin. They're made available to researchers by the Wisconsin Geological and Natural History Survey and the University of Wisconsin Cooperative Extension. Ginder-Vogel and Matthews took extremely thin sections of shale from the cores and they analyzed them at the Advanced Proton Source at Argonne National Laboratory. This massive structure accelerates electrons to nearly the speed of light and smashes them into rock samples. They come down through here. And then you can see there's two very finely machined mirrors. The reflections tell the researchers what elements are in the rocks. All the elements that are present in that little spot. As Matthew said, they're looking for uranium and thorium. Those both decay into radium. Knowing which one is producing the radium will tell us what we can do about it. If it's uranium and you change kind of conditions in the aquifer, then the uranium can be mobile and move around in the aquifer. And then no matter what you do, it's going to be really hard to get the radium out of your drinking water. If it's thorium, it's much easier. Thorium doesn't really dissolve in the water, it doesn't really move around. So you can just construct your well around it and, uh, and then not have that much of a, a radium threat anymore. Okay. And that's, that's what the researchers the are hoping to find. The University of Wisconsin Water Resources Institute, investigating water quantity, quality, and management.